Doug Brown here with some suggestions on how to use a secure messaging app like Signal when dealing with healthcare communication. These are my personal opinions. As far as official endorsements go, I've included a link to the PHSA Office of Virtual Health Privacy Impact Assessment that endorses Signal for secure encrypted messaging between healthcare providers. The link to that document is clickable from the description at the bottom of the video. When it comes to controversy, despite Signal being endorsed by the Ministry of Health via PHSA, Fraser Health has yet to endorse its use beyond the pilot projects currently being run in the RCH Emergency Department. Whether or not they have jurisdiction to regulate the private communication between two physicians using their personal cell phones is a matter of ongoing debate. First, let's start with two don'ts. Don't send text messages that include patient information using the standard messaging app on your phone. The data is not encrypted. Second, don't take pictures of anything containing patient information using the camera app on your phone. The picture will not be encrypted, and in most cases, the picture will be uploaded to the cloud. So how can we use our smartphones to communicate safely while protecting patient privacy? I suggest an approach based on three principles. One, documentation and storage of patient information belongs in the medical record not on my smartphone. Two, configure my smartphone such that any patient information is encrypted and automatically deleted in a timely manner. Three, secure and protect my smartphone with passwords and fingerprints. With the Signal app, it's easy to make privacy happen. When I start a conversation that will include patient information, I turn on disappearing messages. If I need to take a photo of a patient label, an x-ray, a rash. I never use my camera app. Instead, I open Signal and take the photo from within the Signal app. That way the photo stays off the cloud and is encrypted while it's on my device. For items that I want to store temporarily, I use the note to self feature and set disappearing messages for one week. So what sort of things can go wrong? The first common mistake is sending information to the wrong person. Just like typing in the wrong fax number, it's very easy to message the wrong person. A second common mistake is accidentally revealing your personal phone number to patients. If you want to use Signal to communicate with patients, I recommend you use one of the hospital-provided devices. Finally, Signal does have one potential security weakness. We have mitigated this threat on hospital shared devices by running a custom Signal build that requires a password to enter the Signal settings. But for anyone using the standard Signal app, with a couple of clicks, an attacker with access to your unlocked cell phone can link your account to a Signal desktop app and then monitor or impersonate your communication. For more information, see the security threat link in the video description. That's it for major content. Apple users can click the link in the video description to see how to set disappearing messages on an Apple device. For those of you not familiar with it, Signal is an open source app provided by a nonprofit organization dedicated to free, secure internet communication for everyone. It is optimized for privacy. In terms of disclosures, I have no financial conflicts of interest, but I have been using Signal as part of our combined virtual and physical care pilot projects for in hospital patients. To learn more, please visit covidvirtualtools.ca or click the link at the bottom of the video. That's it for now. I look forward to getting your feedback.